Okay, welcome again. My name is Pam Dunwald, and this is your Nurse Advocate Consulting, and this is our October open uh, Q&A session, and we do these monthly. And this month, we're talking about Medicare. Uh, it is open enrollment. Open enrollment starts October 15th and runs through uh, December 7th. And why, why is that important, and why should anyone care about that? Well, this is the one time a year that Medicare gives you a free pass, so to speak, to change your plan. If you're moving or you've had a, um, you're not happy with your current plan or circumstances have changed that you'd like to maybe, you know, just upgrade or change or switch. This is the time of year when Medicare allows you no questions asked that you can make those changes. Otherwise, unless you have a life changing event, then uh, you really have to write out the plan that you have um, on, on, until the next open enrollment period comes. So we are super, super glad you're here. Linda will be joining us shortly. And I just want to uh, throw it out there. You know, Linda and I are not uh, insurance agents. We are not Medicare advisors. What we are, are we are RNs that have board certification in patient advocacy and we don't care what plan you choose. We don't care if it's a traditional or an advantage plan or using a supplement. That's not our role here. Our role is to be able to make you aware of all the questions and all the things that you need to know before you meet with your insurance agent or your Medicare advisor so that you have an idea of what they're going to ask you and talk about. So you've thought this out so that you're going in knowing what you didn't know before. And that's the big thing with Medicare is you don't know what you don't know. So Lynn and I are going to be filling in those gaps tonight and we are going to hopefully have you walk away with a much better understanding of what your choices are and how important uh, your lifestyle, uh, your doctor choices, you know, your travel plans. You're going to see tonight how all of those things impact uh, the plan that you should be choosing. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we're going to go ahead and get started. All right. So you, everybody would have, um, everybody should have their uh, workbook. Uh, we gave when you registered, you had your PDF guide and you have your um, a checklist. So this, this um, PowerPoint or this presentation is really following your guidebook. So you can follow along with us and jot down. So we, we want to make this very easy for you to follow along. And so we are tailored this presentation by what your workbook is, the guide that you received when you registered for our webinar. So let's get started. So a little bit about Linda and I. Uh, Linda and I have known each other for over 30 years. We uh, began working together um, in home health care, and that's where we met, and that's where we became great friends, and we have been friends ever since. Uh, I uh, I was had worked up and to be running the uh, home he home health care office. And uh, Linda was my my right hand. Linda was my second in command. So when the time came that Linda wanted to spread her wings and the only position was mine, she moved on and she's had a great career. Linda has gone into executive nursing and she has started up home health and hospice. She has her MBA. She has her master's in public health. She's also certified in, in quality. Uh, my background is um, I've liked the hands-on, the more um, caring with the, you know, hands-on with the patients. And so I've done emergency nursing, acute care, hospice, home health, and then recently got into case management utilization review. And it was in utilization review that I, on a daily basis, basis, work with insurance company, Medicare guidelines, being compliant with Medicare. So between the two of us, I promise you that we are bringing you a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of information that we're going to share with you tonight. And so that's Linda and I, and uh, hopefully Linda will be on short. Linda just texted me. She's um, was traveling and uh, there was quite a bit of construction and traffic plus an accident. She's fine, but 
um, it's caused her to be uh, delayed. So she will jump in and I assure you, she will have a lot of great information for um, to share with you tonight. So again, what is what is patient advocacy? Well, Linda and I, as as we are winding down our careers working for the hospital, working for other entities and home care agencies, we wanted to take all the knowledge that we have and really help people navigate the healthcare system. And we love our, our seniors, we love our elders. And so that is where we've had a lot of experience and that's where we we find our compassion is helping aging adults navigate the healthcare system along with their adult children. And it's difficult when adult children have to step in and start managing the care of their aging parents. That comes, I mean, that rocks their world. And so we, uh, both Linda and I are actively caring for our aging moms, both are um, having health challenges, Linda's mom and both my mother and mother-in-law. And so we are deep in the weeds with the rest of you that are helping to uh, care for aging parents. So we come with that practical experience as well as the experience of helping others. So let's get started. Before we um, help you decide what the choices are that you need to make, let's just kind of sort all of this out. So what is traditional Medicare? Traditional Medicare is, um, it was started several years ago. It was never intended to be a end all, end all, you know, comprehensive health insurance. Medicare was designed to be that major medical plan that was used for hospitalizations and, and big, big expenses. It wasn't uh, meant to cover all those day-to-day -day little expenses. And so, um, with traditional Medicare, when you're 65 or you've been disabled for a couple of years, you can apply for Medicare as well as Social Security. And Medicare, you have to be, otherwise, if you don't have a disability, you can apply for Medicare when you turn 65. And so Medicare covers, there's Medicare A and there's Medicare B. Medicare A is your hospitalization. That covers the time when you have to go into the hospital doesn't matter if you're admit, you know, it, it, it makes a difference if you're admitted to observation or inpatient. We're not going to spend a lot of time about that. But what's important that you know about that is if you're admitted observation, that means the doctor feels that you're going to be discharged from the hospital in 48 hours or less, usually trying to do more diagnostics. It's an extension of um, an outpatient so it's Medicare Part B, the outpatient portion of Medicare, is what will pay for a hospital observation stay. And so that gets a little tricky. Make sure if you are admitted to observation and you have Medicare, you'll have to sign a form that um, you've talked to somebody and they've explained to you exactly what it means to be admitted to observation. Again, Medicare pays differently for observation Um if it's observation, they'll pay at 80% and there's a 20% copay and some medications that you're given in the hospital may not be covered. So it's important that you know these things. Now, if you're admitted as an inpatient, which means the doctor feels that your illness or your um, disease process, you, you know, whether you've had a flare is, is serious enough that you're going to spend more than two days in the hospital they'll admit you under inpatient status. Now, inpatient status is that Medicare Part A is that hospitalization. So Medicare will pick up um, that hospital stay. Now, there, there are co-pays. Um, Medicare is what we call episodic, which means every 90 days is another cycle with Medicare. So you may have a co-insurance of $2,500 dollars and if you go in the hospital every three months, you could have up to five of those um, out-of-pocket uh, payments that that will be due with just a plain traditional Medicare plan, and then, but if you go back into the hospital in less than ninety days, then you would not have to pay that again. So make sure when you go in the hospital, make sure you know what's what's covering your bill, whether you're an observation or whether you're a medical inpatient. Now, what's a Medicare supplement? A Medicare supplement is when you have traditional Medicare, which we just talked about, but you have a supplemental insurance 
that will pick up the the costs that Medicare will not pay. They will help cover that deductible. They will help cover that 20% on an observation stay, which is like an outpatient stay. Again, your part B is outpatient, doctor's office, outpatient th uh, therapy, going to the emergency room, that's all considered um, outpatient and, and is part B. Also part B covers any kind of durable medical equipment, uh, walkers, wheelchairs, um, oxygen, things like that. So Medicare A, that is only for an inpatient hospitalization. So, so if people have traditional Medicare, it's always an, a, a maybe a good idea if you can afford a Medicare supplement because that's gonna that's gonna pay for those things that Medicare the portions of that um, Medicare doesn't cover it as long as it's a Medicare covered item then Medicare will um, will cover that and the supplement will cover that and so if you have any questions when you're in the hospital you're at the clinic ask if you're if you're getting any kind of equipment or you're in the hospital please ask so this is our goal tonight is is it's going to be a lot of information and we just want to be able to raise awareness for you so that you have the knowledge to ask the right questions and ask the questions so that you know exactly what's what's going on and what's going to get paid for now medicare supplement can cost anywhere from 250 up to 4 450 a month and everything in between so that's a budgetary consideration that you're going to have to have but it is it is very good coverage because um, you have your Medicare and then you have your supplement that's going to pick up what Medicare doesn't. So what's Medicare Part C? Medicare Part C is the Advantage Plan. And what is an Advantage Plan? An Advantage Plan is an insurance company that offers a Medicare plan. Um, but it's run by an insurance company. It's not run by the Medicare or the, the government. So Medicare, when you sign up for Medicare and you choose Part B, well, there's a dollar amount that will get deducted from your Social Security, and that goes to your Part B. And so if you have an Advantage plan, that portion of your dollar amount will go to the insurance company. So your Medicare benefits are now managed by the insurance company that you choose with a Medicare Advantage plan. Now, what are some of the differences with a Medicare Advantage plan? Well, a Medicare Advantage plan may have um, lower um, monthly costs, and we're going to get into uh, what some of the things to consider as far as Advantage plan. Some of these insurance companies can offer you some things that Medicare don't. They may offer meals uh, for a period of time after you come out of the hospital. They may offer you some over-the-counter expenses you can charge. They may give you a gym membership or some kind of fitness or or a, a diet program, a wellness program. So they they give you lots of little things, but you know how those insurance companies stay afloat is is you know part is is managing the dollars, and so they get a bucket of money for you from Medicare, and and they they spend that how they they see fit. So um, there are some perks to having an Advantage plan along with maybe a lower cost uh, per month, but um, there are other things to consider as well. And we will um, we will discuss that in a little bit. So what about medication coverage? That's the Part D. So um, if you have straight Medicare or a supplement, maybe you can get your Part D from your Medicare supplement plan. Uh, the Part D is what pays for medications. And we're going to get into that talking about, you know, if you take little or a lot, you know, what are your, some of your considerations? One of the nice things with an Advantage plan is more often than not, the Advantage plan will include a medication plan right along with your Advantage plan. So that um, that is a perk for some people because they, they don't have to get another plan. They have it right there with their Advantage plan. Uh, so let's move on. So the first thing um, that we need to consider when we're looking at Medicare is where where do you live? What's available in your area? Not all plans are available every any everywhere. So the first thing that you need to do or research um, or a question you know that you need to ask your advisor, your insurance is, uh, person, your agent is what plans are available in my area? More often than not, the Medicare Advantage plans they go by zip code. So certain plans are offered based on where you live, what your geographic location. So that's the first thing that you need to do is find out what plans are available in your geography. Um, 
And a place too, before you meet with your insurance agent or before you meet with a Medicare advisor, your local, your county aging and disability resource center, senior center, aging, you know, center of the aging, whatever they call that in your county, every county has one across the United States. That's a great place to start to try and ask to get a list of, of the plans that are available in your zip code. Uh, so here are some of the questions, you know, and, and you can, you know, write these down if these are pertinent for you, but what are your co-pays for, for hospitalization? So when you're comparing some of looking at the advantage plans and the insurance, what, what are your co-pays? Um, so is, um, is there a copay for a doctor's office? What's the copay for, to see a specialist? What's the copay if you go to the emergency room or have x-rays or radiology services, or what's the copay for an outpatient surgery? Say you have to have your appendix out or your gallbladder out or a, a, a minor, you know, day surgery where you, you're not expected to stay more than overnight in the hospital. What are your copays going to be for those surgeries? And you know, here's here's an insider question for you to ask if you're looking at a, an insurance plan or, or looking at a, an advantage plan. Ask, you know, ask who's ever, you know, if you're considering an insurance plan, ask them how often they've denied surgeries for their insured or they've denied services. Uh, they've denied nursing home placement. How often have they denied? Um, and, and that's really important to know because these are some of the behind the scenes that I see every day, you know, working in utilization review is I work with these insurance companies on the back end. You see the commercials, you see all the good things that they can offer. And I see the back end when, when they don't want to pay. So um, it's, it's very, very important. So ask those questions. They may look at you like, you know, where did you come up with that question? But um, I think it's a fair question to ask and they should be able to give you an answer. If they're not willing to share that or not willing to give you some kind of an answer, I, I would can really consider that a red flag. So the next thing you want to um, think about is what are the deductibles and the coinsurance costs? Um, again, we talked about some of the high deductibles that come with a traditional Medicare plan if you don't have a supplement to help um, pay for those out-of-pockets. What are your out-of-pocket maximums? Are there discounts, uh, credits available based on um, on your income? Now, some Advantage plans, if you, based on income, if you are in a, a lower income category, some of our seniors uh, are, I mean, they're on a fixed income with just their social security. So sometimes some of these plans, all they'll take is your Medicare Part B and you have a zero copay. So uh, that might be a consideration Um and every state is different. So, I mean, it, it would depend on your assets and, and that. So, but that would be something that to consider uh, if you um, are in preparing to speak with your Medicare advisor. The other thing that a lot of people forget about is if you are um, a veteran, you know, what, what benefits are you entitled to the VA? Even if you're not 100% service connected, there are still services that you can get um, from the VA. So I really encourage you, even if you have it, even if you don't use the VA for your doctor or, you know, say you just use the VA for your medications, it's worth calling and, and speaking with an intake specialist at the VA to just review with you over the phone, just what you might be um, uh, able to receive as far as benefits go from the, from the VA. So how much will my Medi Medicare plan cost? Um, even when you're looking at Medicare Advantage plans, they have different plans that cost. They'll have a zero plan. They may have a, um, a lower amount. They may have a higher amount, which comes with lower deductibles. Uh, are they adding medications? Do they add dental? How much? And if if they're a Medicare Advantage plan is offering dental, you need to ask that. You need to find out, you know, how much is included in that. For example, we have an Advantage plan. And again, just because I have an Advantage plan doesn't mean an Advantage plan is right for you. So um, again, like I said, there's no right or wrong. It's just based on your um, circumstances. So in mine, um, I my I have dental within the, my basic plan, 
but it's only enough to, to pay for my cleaning. So if I were to have any other dental work, it wouldn't cover. So it's really important for you to know if they're saying, oh, you know, you have dental benefits. Well, just how much dental, dental benefits, you know, do you have? What are my co-payments going to be? So it's real important to, to look at your co-pays because this is going to be important to try and figure out, you know, what you can spend and what is going to work within your budget. So now we're going to start getting into um, the questions and things. So this is going to be a great place to just take some notes and uh, start to jot down some ideas as they pop into your head as it pertains to your particular situation. So what is your current budget for healthcare expenses? So um, average um, Medicare Advantage plan can be 49, 69, 79, 99, 109 a month you know, somewhere in that range, depending on the plan and, and all the benefits that you're, that you're getting, or you could, um, and, and you'll have that, those Medicare be, you know, taken out of your, your Medicare and that goes to the insurance, or you can just have your traditional Medicare and then pay, you know, the 250 to four or $500 a month for a supplement plan. So oftentimes the supplements are the most comprehensive coverage and you're going to pay the least out of pocket. So if you're in the hospital frequently and, and you're dealing with a chronic um, illness, having a traditional Medicare with a Medicare supplement may be more cost effective for you. You'll pay more money up front, but you'll pay less on the back end when you're in the hospital. If you're relatively healthy and you don't go into the hospital a lot, then maybe an Advantage plan might be best for you. You're going to pay less monthly, but if you go in the hospital, you might have you know a daily copay. Our Advantage plan, we have a, a copay of two hundred and fifty dollars a day while we're in the hospital, up to five days, and then there's no other. Then there's no copay. So these are important questions to ask. And so, and the nice thing is, is if you have one plan. And it's been working for you. And all of a sudden, a few years down the road, you're diagnosed with a chronic illness that may have frequent hospitalizations. Remember, Medicare gives you this time of year every year to be able to change. So you're not stuck. Um, you know, you can you can change plans. Do you have a health savings account? Um, and that's something you can work with with your CPA, uh, who does your taxes, your financial advisor. Uh, this may help offset some of your expenses. Um, is there a penalty for delaying enrollment? Yes, there is. And that's something that, again, we're not an advisor, and um, but this is something that you want to consider if if it's you have um you have uh, three months before your 60, 65th birthday and three months after your 65th birthday to go ahead and enroll. And if you miss that window, you may be subject to some penalties. One another question is, is are you more concerned with lower payments and, and as we mentioned and pay more if you go into the hospital or pay more upfront monthly and pay less if you have to go in the hospital? My mom, you know, as as siblings, you know, we were um, encouraging our mom, you know, maybe if she could do traditional Medicare and then get a supplement, which would be the most comprehensive coverage. But she did not want to, she did not want to spend that kind of money a month. So she's with an advantage plan and she's been very happy with that. But again, that was her choice. And that is a choice that you need to consider as well. So now we're going to get into thinking about some of the lifestyle considerations. So if you have a preferred doctor, um, providers, health specialists, you'll wanna make sure that they're in network with the plan you choose. Otherwise you may have to choose a different plan or you may have to change doctors. So when we're looking at those Medicare Advantage plans and some of them are, are local plans that you will need to see um, you know, a doctor in network for them to give you the best coverage. So that's something to consider when you're looking at what plans are available in your area. It's very important to sort them out by which ones. And that's what how I would sort it is once you find out what plans are available in your area, then narrow down your choices by which ones accept, you know, which ones are accepted by your clinic or your hospital system, because there's no sense looking at a plan 
that your doctor isn't in network with unless you're willing to to change doctors. Now, some people might be because it's going to save them some money. Again, no right or wrong answer, just what works best for you in your lifestyle. So again, when, when um, we're looking at the clinic, we're looking at the doctor and also, you know, prescription drugs. Now, every, every insurance company or, or Medicare Part D, your Advantage plan, they have what they call is a formulary. A formulary is the list of the medications that they cover. And they're usually put into tiers, like tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four. Tier one is usually the lowest cost to you. Tier four and above is usually the highest cost to you. And those might be some drugs, you know, some um, chemo, some uh, or more expensive biologic medications, medications that are, are not generic. So it's real important to look and see what... Uh, medications that you're taking and if they're covered. So a good example is there's two medications that the doctors like to look at now for anticoagulants or blood thinners, like like when you're having knee knee surgery or that, and that's Eliquis and Xeralto, two different medications, two different companies. But again, you know, one of those might be on your formulary and one may not. So be they're very expensive. You might have a $350 copay if it's not on your formulary. So depending on your medications, that's that's how you, again, start weeding down and, and weeding out your choices is then to look at the drug formulary and see um, what medications are. And, you know, I'm just going to say this. I, I know this is, is very overwhelming. And this is one of the things that that Linda and I, as, as nurse advocates, this is something that we can help you with, um, you know, we could come alongside and, and help you sort, sort this out. You know, you could um, have us consulting for you. And so just know that that's available. If you don't have someone that can help and sort this out and you're super overwhelmed with this, you can for sure reach out to Lynn and I and, and, and we can help you um, sort this out. Another thing is um, how often do you travel? you know, do you travel outside of the country? Some Advantage planes may not cover you um, when you travel out of the country. Some of them will cover emergency room or urgent care. So that's real important. In your golden years, if you're fortunate enough to be able to travel, this is a consideration that you need to take when you're choosing your, your Medicare plan. That's the one nice thing with staying with traditional Medicare and maybe with a supplement is that Medicare is accepted, you know, nationwide throughout the United States. There's no network. You can go to any doctor. So, you know, that's one of the perks of, of having traditional Medicare. With an Advantage plan, more often than not, you're going to, to have a network. And when you are outside of that network or not cannot attend a provider or facility that's a network, then, then you may have a very large, larger copay or they may not cover it at all. Um, are there other additional benefits that are important to you? like we talked about dental or or vision if you wear glasses you know um you know what what other benefits come along with maybe some of those advantage plans so now we're going to um just deep dive a little bit and i'm going to take a break here if if anything that we've talked about if you have a question or something um you know just take a minute if you have to jot down we're going to save our questions um to the end uh, so we will put that at, at the end of our, our webinar, but I just wanted to just pause a moment. And um, if you're thinking about something and you don't want to forget it, go ahead and uh, jot that, jot those questions down. All right. Now we're going to move into uh, lifestyle. So some of the things to consider is, do you prefer predictability and stability in your healthcare coverage or flexibility and choice? Again, flexibility and choice would be more with the traditional Medicare and possibly with a supplement to go with it. And uh, predictability and stability, you know, that would be your chosen network. For us, with us in an Advantage plan, you know, that's what I do. We, we go to a certain system. I, I, I know that system. I know my doctors are all going to be within that system. And so I, I, I like that type of um, coverage. But that might not be, you know, if, if I traveled, if I was maybe a snowbird 
you know, maybe I would want to stay with traditional Medicare and a supplement because I want that flexibility to live in different places during the year. Uh, so we talked about additional benefits. We talked about a little bit about chronic conditions and frequent uh, doctor's visits, treatments, or frequent trips to the hospital. Those are all uh, things to consider. And so what I, we're hoping to do is when you're done with this, that you've been able to compile kind of a profile of yourself. Um, I, I have chronic conditions, but I like to travel. Um, this is what I can afford for healthcare. So by the time we're done, we're hoping that you can create some kind of a map or some kind of a, a outline with your preferences. So you've had, so when you go and you make your choices with your insurance agent or your Medicare advisor, you have already had this mapped out and then they can ask those final questions. So you, they can match you with that plan that fits your, your map or um, your outline of what you want your plan to look like. So do you have any pre-existing conditions that required specialized care? We talked about frequency in the hospital. We talked about, you know, whether you take drugs, um, prescription drugs regularly, or if you really don't take any at this time. Um, what's your typical usage? How often are you going to the doctor? How often are you having procedures done? Is there going to be any limitations or restrictions on your on your coverage based, you know, that could impact you getting the, the medical help that you need? Um, and so, you know, if, if you can look at the past year and look at your medical expenses and kind of get an idea of what you spent, that could also help you look at, um, you know, plan for, for choosing that right, the, the right plan that, that suits you the best. So when we're looking at health concerns, um, you know, are you looking for coverage, say preventative care, such as regular checkups, immunizations, screenings? How does, how does your plan, if you're looking at an Advantage plan, what do they cover? Do they cover the colonoscopies? Do they cover the mammograms? Do they cover the prostate exam? What do they cover? What, what will they cover as far as preventative and, and for you? Um, do you have, again, we talked about your preferred network of healthcare providers. Now, this is something to consider. You may have, maybe you have a doctor that may be a network, but you have a specialist, say you've had a knee replacement before and you want to go to another doc, you want to go to that same doctor who did your one knee, but it's out of network. Are you willing to pay that out of network cost or are you know are you willing to consider changing that doctor so that it, it saves you some money? Um, do you have any upcoming surgeries? And we talked about that. What will they cover? What's your co-pays? Will you need long-term care benefits? Do you anticipate that you might sometime need to go into a nursing home or an assisted living? Uh, Medicare does not cover custodial care, such as bathing, dressing, housekeeping, running errands, cooking meals. This is where a long-term care insurance policy could come into the in play. I'll be honest with you, they're not inexpensive. But again, this is another layer of very comprehensive services. So if you want to stay in your home and you don't want to consider going to a nursing home or assisted living, then you can um, look into, you know, you can ask your insurance agent about a long-term care insurance because that might cover that custodial care and that non-medical or non-skilled um, home services that can come in for the things such as bathing, loud light housekeeping, and meal planning. So we talked a little bit about medications and how they could be costly. Make sure you check your formulary. Uh, are the drugs that you're routinely taking, are they, gonna be, are they going to be covered? Um, and so let's talk a little bit about Snowbird or multiple residence considerations. There are some things that people may not consider. So for example, you live um, in the upper Midwest Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan, uh, you're in a colder climate and you want to go south or west for the winter. You want to go to Florida or you want to go maybe to Arizona or another place of your choice that's nice. And maybe you're going to spend three, four, five months of the year there. Well, if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, you're going to run into trouble because unless you're in a big enough network where you're traveling to that you're still in network, Otherwise, the likelihood of you being out of network, now you may get, depending on your advantage plan, you may get your in emergency room or urgent care 
visit covered, but you're not going to be able to go to the, the pharmacy um, and out of, out of your area and get your routine medication spilled. So sometimes you're going to have to, if you, if you're on an advantage plan or, or where you, you can't get your, will be out of network. You may have to get enough, you know, like a three month supply of medications, um, before you, before you leave, make sure you see the doctor, make sure you had all your checkups and your workups and everything done before you go, because unless it's an emergency, you may not have coverage in the other location where you are. So this is a big consideration for, for those of you that, that live in multiple places. So in this case, again, maybe a traditional Medicare with a supplement may be um, a, a good choice for you because you don't want to be locked into a network because you're not in, you know, you're not in your home location all the time. So these are some of the questions and we've talked a little bit. I'm not going to go in. These are in your workbook again, one by one going through the questions. You know, if you are a snowbird or if you do live in more um, one place or if you travel outside of the country, make sure that you will have coverage uh, when you're away from home in any kind of an emergency. So think about what are the benefits of each plan. Uh, we talked about basics through comprehensive, um, in network, you know, these are just kind of wrapping up. This is, these are just the summary, the questions that we want to put together when you are uh, filling out that map, make, you know, several columns, um, you know, put or, or make a list of what your must haves are. And so this is, you know, just keep going through the workbook and, and jotting down things that are important to you. So now we have come to the time where uh, it is time for questions. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and I'm going to uh, stop the recording. I'm, I'm going to uh, stop the recording here because um, I do not want, if anybody has any questions, you know, I, I want it to be us. So there's a little bit more privacy. And before we get into the questions, I just want to say that, you know, these are some ways that you can reach out to us. We have a very large selection of free resources for you. And that's just our website is yournurseadvocateconsulting.com. Um, and you can see here on the screen forward slash free dash resources. Uh, Linda and I are always available and I do apologize. Uh, we will see if we can do an encore presentation and I'll bring Linda back on. And if I can, uh, we will include that second um, session uh, with Linda as, as a bonus. And we will make sure that if you're registered, you will get that emailed to you as well. So, um, but yeah, so reach out. Linda and I, if, again, if this is very overwhelming for you, we do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting services. We have um, on our website, you can uh, schedule a 30-minute uh, uh, consultation with us, and that is free. And in that 30 minutes, we will uh, listen to your situation, and we will give you for that free session, we will give you at least two um, action items that you can walk away with and implement um, two uh, pieces of advice that you can act on right away, just included in our our 30 minute free consulting. And then at the end of that consulting call, then the, it's up to you. You can take what we've given you and run, or you can, uh, we can discuss what part of our services may be of benefit for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. <laughs>